Hi, uh, my name is Noah. And I'm Jojo. And we're both second years here at IC Theatre. And today we have had the wonderful honor of interviewing the hip hop artistry patron, Ron Elliston. So Ron, thank you for being here with us this afternoon. You're welcome. Um, first question is, what does Black History Month mean to you? <laughs> What's Black History Month? Exactly. There should be no Black History Month. We are living this world all the time. Yes, I suppose it highlights to certain people there's an awareness that there are black excellence in things, which is okay, but I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Black History Month at all. Fair enough. Um, well then, a bit about the industry, I suppose. What advice would you give to a young black person who is thinking about pursuing uh, either, you know, something more in the hip-hop world or more in the performing arts world or just the industry in general? In the industry in general, I think what it is, is what my, what my father said to me, that the advice is that you are as good as anyone else. The obstacles that are in front of you, you've got to figure out ways of getting around it and being very clever about it. So seek and look at the, the people that have been successful in the arts that, that are of black uh, origin. And see and listen to, their, to some of the ways that they have gone forward but it's really important to make sure that you believe in yourself that's the most important thing first for sure so uh, as a young black male what challenges did you face and how did it help you to get where you are at this point in your career i suppose because i never actually had challenges in the sense because i refused to let challenges get in the way i I just was thinking, what I would do is think to myself, right, I want to do this, how's the best way for me to achieve it? And look around, watch, look and learn, and don't take no for an answer. I think it's really important for us as well, just to like, just, yeah. if we want something, just to absolutely have that perseverance. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I, 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 like, I feel like a lot of people tend to get discouraged as well, because they're like, oh, I can't, well, I'm yeah. not, yeah. No, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, there are, there's going to be obstacles, Everyone's got different obstacles in a way, whether you're black, white, whatever. It's just that black, it's you are, you can feel it. You can feel there's an obstacle and you've got to somehow just go, nah, I've got something special I want to deliver. Especially if you've got a passion about something, yeah. just be really good at it, be the best at it and just, just work through it. You know, look, learn, watch, you just be passionate about it. Just get to the point where you're get so good point. that they can't say no. Yeah, basically. they can't say no. Yeah. Just keep knocking the doors down. Yeah, I like that. Definitely, that's definitely a good piece of advice that I will take away from this. Yeah. So in terms of inclusivity, how has the industry changed since you first started? We want it, we, the, the, the thing is, is if you are successful and you're good, the thing to do is to make your own way, right? And create your own thing to such a point where they want you. Yeah. If you're just gonna keep knocking on the door and you've not got something they want, guess what? You're still gonna be knocking on the door. So most of the times I say, sod what they want, what do I wanna make? And then I'd look around and find the people to create what I wanna do, not to try and go on the back of someone else's shit, for a better word. Yeah. If, you, if you're gonna make a product, make an event, make something, make it for you, and then resonate in such a way that people think, you know what, I want to join that, that looks really good. Then you can take it to the next level, but if you're just going to look at, please, can I go and work in, no, forget it. You'd be knocking forever. Yeah. You've got to believe in yourself. Yes, you totally, everything yourself. is strength for believing in yourself first. And I'm not saying you've got to be arrogant, you can even sometimes be silent in your belief, it's just like, you know what, you've got to get into the room before you can start painting it. But if the door's shut, but you've got to be in the room. So if it means getting in there and meek and mellow and acting a bit, get through the doors once you're in, and you go, right, now let me see, work your way around the room to figure out how to paint it quickly. Yeah, it's kind of going off where you're saying, like, um, making material that you really want to work no, on. No, totally. You can't do it unless you believe in it and you want to do that yourself. Yeah. Problem is a lot of people get pushed into doing stuff they don't really want to do it, but their yeah. friends have told them to do it, their mum's told them to do it, their dad's told yeah. them to do it, and then they go, I'm gonna go do a university and then they're in there and that's not really they're not really passionate about that. They're, thing. they're just going they're happy about it at yeah. all because oh my son's at university, my daughter's at university and the son's a daughter there and they're like Really, why am I here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And that, that, you got to be in university doing something you really want. I often say to people, I retired when I was 35, because when, up until 35, I was an engineer, civil engineer. When I got into the music industry and into the entertainment industry, I no longer saw it as a job. I don't see my work as a job. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. think, oh my God. I, I'm reminded recently because of the project I'm working at the moment, I'm hoping to get on the tube. And that's reminded me how much 
my life was changed considering that these people have to, I only have to get in there once a week, these people have to do it five days a week in the rush hour and it's hell. And I just see everyone and I just think, I'm glad I ain't doing that. It's such a luxury as well to be able to say like, I don't see my work or my job as work. No, no, well, yeah. no, you don't, you don't. I think if, if you enjoy what you're doing, you don't. I don't see how you can if you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. That's sure. why I love being here. Yeah, same, yeah. You're trying to break into. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, well, yeah, next question. So, how do you deal with stereotypes and stigmas placed upon our skin colour within the industry? How do I deal with it? I don't because I won't allow it. I just, I won't, I will not allow myself to be pigeonholed and be. You can use it to your advantage, you know what I mean? Sometimes you can actually use it to your advantage, it's quite funny, but. You have to know within yourself what's going on yeah. and don't be naive, don't be naive. But I will not allow, I will not, I, I, A, I won't want to work with people that think like that anyway, there's no point. I'm, I'm not, that's not to say there are certain people in positions of power in terms of producers and directors that have got a certain attitude, but then that's up to you to take a call whether or not you really want to do that. Yeah. But understand this, don't go moaning about them. You know, if it walks like a dog, barks like a dog, eats out of a bowl, it's a dog. Don't expect it to become something else. So you make that decision yourself to do that. So, yeah, if it's a means to an end and you know, you say, you know what? I'm gonna hold my tongue here because if I just get past this bit, I can get to the next bit, so be it. Yeah. But know your position, know where you are. Do not get deterred and then, then go home and grind, oh, you've been all bad to me all week. Oh, get it, man, Jesus, chip. Fair enough. Um, and then our last question, um, what inspired you to pursue the career um, that you are in now? <laughs> I was, I basically wanted to be an astronaut as I was a kid. Really? Yeah, because I watched the moon landing, which oh, I yeah. don't even get me going on that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the biggest yeah. con gone ever made to mankind. But anyway, I really want to be an astronaut. I realized I wasn't going to be an astronaut because I didn't have the intelligence on that level, mathematics and all the rest of it. So I went to the next best thing, which was construction. I was really interested in really big construction projects. So I decided I want to be a civil engineer. So I worked for a company that, I was a draftsman for the guy that designed the Thames Barrier. And I worked for a company doing engineering works. But I was then, I discovered nightclubs. And then I, I used to literally, go out raving and climb over the building sites and sleep in the huts and everything. <laughs> Just because I had this world of being in construction, looking through a full of light, doing all the works. And then a friend of mine asked me to come and pretend I was in a band because he got, he, uh, he was with um, a company, he, had a, he basically was a very famous DJ in, uh, in the club called The Beat Root. And he looked after a band called Animal Nightlife that was signed to an independent record label, which was part of CBS, which was a huge label. And he got sick and tired that his band wasn't taken seriously enough from the record company, so he wanted to wind the record company up. So he asked me to go in there to be in a band, and he said, oh, I know this band from East London, they're called Black Britain. I'm the only white guy they speak to. <laughs> and they went, oh, right, bring them in, bring them in. So I went in there, pretended I was a black Marxist, wound them up. Uh, whispered in my friend's ear and he spoke to them, so I never spoke to them direct. Came out of the meeting, thought that was really funny, and that was the end of that. And uh, literally within a week, we had um, every record company in the country, in London, wanted to know who we were. So, it's pretty impressive. I then yes. said to my brother, I'm gonna go around to these record companies, find out what it's about. Didn't, didn't say we had a mute, didn't, didn't give them anything. Didn't even, they didn't hear, we didn't have anything, there was nothing, it didn't exist. So I said, you know, Kev, we might as well, well go out and learn how to play something. So we went away for three and a half, four months. And we actually could play something. And then we had a massive, uh, got a massive deal with Virgin Records, which was a five year deal, 450,000 pounds. Then we got a publishing deal with EMI for 100,000. And that's when I went into the entertainment industry. Sure. You just found a path from there. So. Yeah, and then from there, I went into creating my own club, which is a whole nother world. Uh, I, uh, I started doing events and parties and uh, an opportunity came along for me to do something completely radical that no one had really done before, which is... Uh, <laughs> 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 I created uh, uh, the country's first fetish dance club. I, had a, I created a club called Submission. And what I did then, because that was the infancy of house music, I mixed the two together. I mixed, I mixed the fetish scene 
and the rave scene, well, the, the acid house scene, I, I mixed them together and we created a club was in the rubber. And that was basically the start. About a year and a half after that, Torture Garden started. But right from the outset, our, our remit was people with an open mind, open concept with great contemporary music of the day. And we ran that for like 15 years. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. But from there, the doors opened on so many other projects from there, it just went crazy. Yeah. So then what, well, I had my own production company, a props and scenery company, production company. Oh, we had the lot. Every, every aspect to do with putting on an event or putting on anything. But we had a model agency, the lot. And um, we were based up in Camden. Phew. That's, <laughs> I don't even, I don't even know, I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't even have words right about it. Yeah. yeah, so it all started from a black. <laughs> that is crazy. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's something, it's something quite unique as well, I mean. Most of them, quite a few of the people I know that are super successful, most of them started on a black, but the thing is, the black's one thing, it's the delivery, which yeah. is important. Yeah. And like black gets you through the door. It's once you're through the door, right, what have you got? And work, luckily yeah. for us and the people that I worked with, we actually had some kind of talent because we did, we ended up signing a huge deal. We traveled, I, I lived in New York and that's another step up because I met all these amazing musicians. I worked out there. I went to um, played Wembley, met some of my, some of my idols, became really, really, became friends. And then along that way, I started DJing and I DJed for Prince. Twice and I DJ for loads and loads of kind of high end artists. There's a there's a DJ. Incredible. Yeah. And what what other artists have you worked with? Like because you mentioned Prince, which is a pretty big name. I work yeah. with Bootsy. <laughs> yeah, pretty big name. <laughs> Should we slide that in? Bootsy Bootsy Collins. I work with uh, the guys from. Co I mean, the thing is, I'm a lot older, so I work with a lot of the artists that I worked with then uh, was some time ago from the bands from the eighties. Quite a lot of artists from the eighties. I've got a new. We got a new group now, with, which I do with two other guys, a lot younger than me, but we've got a thing called Midnight Takeaway. So that's kind of more contemporary, doing like house and tech house and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing to come up. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, well, that's the questions we have for you. Do you have like any last like pieces of advice, like general advice to give to... Yeah, maybe to anyone. That's to anyone, don't get a nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything that maybe like deter on a young person. I just destroy. think, look at what you want to do. Do your, re especially now it's easy to do the research with, you know, search engines are there to, to use to be searched because before it was going to the library, it was the right of passage and getting into anything back then was so much more difficult because you know, you get a magazine, have a look through it. Now it's, it's actually easier. Yeah. It's actually easier. And if you believe in what you're doing, have something that's unique, have something that stands out on its own, which is quite unique, but also think about it on a commercial term. Think of the big picture. Think of it being small, then think of where you want to go. Because a lot of people just think, oh, I'll do this bit, but I actually haven't thought about the end. Yeah. Where's your end goal? Work out where you are. And then look, seek out and try and find the best people that are in that industry. Try and, try and network and meet people that are actually really doing it. Nothing works better than actually meeting real people doing it. They go, you know what, I like you. Let's, let's try and do something. Yeah, for sure. That works. I think that's also a good thing about IC Theatre is that we have some opportunities. Yeah, so many opportunities and everyone's just like into different things. Yeah, the other thing I would say as well, always be nice. Because oh, yeah. you never know. I've met people that were the bus boy one day, and I've met them years later, and they're the CEO of some international business. And if, if they always remember you, if you stay courteous and nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Number one life rule. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Yeah. Really, really, yeah, really appreciate Good it. Good luck. Happy hunting. Thank you. <laughs>